Okay, so on our previous session, uh, on our website, what we have created using HTML5, CSS3, we added few of the HTML5 JavaScript in that. So we learned the drag and drop API of HTML5, then we learned the web storage and we implemented the local storage uh, to uh, save our card even uh, someone has been uh, closed the instance. So next time we log in to our browser, we are saving the card using uh, local storage dot set data set get for the driving. So all the things uh, we learned on our previous session. So today we are going to learn geolocation. So geolocation is one of the very popular feature of HTML5 and it allows browsers to uh, retrieve the geographic location of the user, right? So like uh, the latitude, uh, the longitude, the height, the speed, the direction. So these are the things which uh, refers to a location and the speed and the direction where the user is heading. So those kind of information, if we want to retrieve, then we have to use the HTML5 geolocation API. And it's highly accurate also because uh, this uh, all these uh, websites which helps us to track the things in the real time. If we say Ubev, uh, which is a car pooling application, right? And so those are the application which are heavily dependent on this location and even when, when we uh, open uh, some of the uh, the ticket booking, the flight ticket booking website, they also ask <coughs> and try to get our location so that uh, based on that we can show uh, the nearest hotels or the flights. Uh, so so, so those all applications and the websites use this location. And uh, oh, and the, uh, even the Google Map, what we use, right? So that also behind the scene, use the geolocation. So so we say we want to go from this to this, then show us the path, and uh, Google does that, right? So so we'll also do something like that. And geolocation is highly accurate, uh, accurate, and it's useful for uh, weather sites, map sites, traffic info. So geolocations contain sensitive data, right? Because it it can tell you where you are. <coughs> so before that, so before accessing the browser, ask for the permission to use it. So when we implement geolocation, and we're trying to get the location of that user. You might have seen the website ask you, uh, saying the website wants to know your location. So are you okay with that or not? So once you say okay, then only the website can know your location, otherwise it will not. So that's the one level of uh, security what the browser has provided so that uh, none, I mean, the XYZ website should not know your location. So it should be, uh, you should give the permission to do this. Okay, so geolocation works uh, asynchronously, so I means we need to uh, call the methods with success and error block. So, so because it gives us the data, right? So when I ask, hey, what's the location of this user? I'll not get the data very immediately. So I'll, so that could not be a synchronous call, right? So it's like uh, talking with a backend service. So the talk, when we talk with the backend service, how we do? We call it, then we uh, register a success and error callback functions. Or in the Angular, we have used promises in the jQuery we have used callbacks, the success error callbacks. So similar way here also we have to use the success and callback, success and error callback. So there are few uh, geolocation methods are there and there are very few. One is get current position. So this is a method name. When you call this get current position, uh, it returns uh, the current coordinates, the timestamp, timestamp when, when the data is retrieved the accuracy, how accurate it is, uh, the speed, the direction in case of success. So once you call it and once the success happens, so here are the data, I'll get it inside a success callback. And if it return, if, if it fails, then it returns the failure reason, I mean why it could not able to 
give me the coordinates and the other data. So it says whether user has denied the permission or the timeout has happened or uh, some other issue happened that's why I didn't get the information, right? So apart from that, there is one more method is there that's called watch position. So this watch position, what you can do, uh, you can watch for the change of the position. So if user changes its position, then it will, uh, you can get to know. So this watch, watch position listens for the change of position. And then there is a clear watch. So if you don't want to listen for that update, uh, you can just clear that watch. I, I don't want to watch that user anymore. So that's a clear one. So there are the three things which uh, we are going to use to uh, implement geolocation in our coffee website, what we have created. So what we'll do, we'll give them the, uh, uh, we'll create a new page in our application and we'll tell the user where our coffee store is located and we'll ask the user to give his current location so that we can give the direction for that user to come to our coffee store. Okay. So that we are going to implement. So to do that, uh, first I'll go to the Chrome. Uh, so on a previous session, so we have implemented this PG's coffee store, right? And we implemented this drag and drop feature uh, where we can drag a uh, item and add to our shopping cart. And now it's uh, remembering our shopping cart also because of our local storage implementation. So now you can see there is a finders link is there, but when you click that, nothing happens because I don't have a page for this. So it's trying to find out the finders.html page which we have not created. So what we'll do, we'll go back to our code. And you can see we don't have a page called uh, finders.html. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a finders.html page. So I'll just say find us.html. That's done. And if you see in all our uh, HTML page, that reference is already there, line number 22. So that's why we are seeing that finders link in our uh, navigation bar. So, so that when someone will click, you will navigate to finders Okay, so that link is there in all the pages already. So now in the finders.html, now if you see in all our pages, uh, one thing is common up to this date, line number 35, it's common. So it will be a same header, same navigation links, and same welcome images are there. So I'll just copy a finders.html and then I'll explain uh, what we are trying to do in finders.html page, okay? So that's a page. I just copy it. So till this, it's everything same. We are having a header where we are having a logo, the BJ's coffee store, uh, the our store name, and then the navigation links, and then two images which comes up right at the right side. The coffee of the month image comes, and then there is a welcome image which comes up uh, at the top. And this is the section which I just added extra in this page. And what that is. I'm having a plain header where I'm saying come to our real life store, okay? And I've just created a blank div. You can see this is just a blank div which is just having ID map and inside that div nothing is there. It's a blank div, okay? So we I just created a blank div. So where we'll put our map. And then I've created one uh, line of 45 that's a dri driving direction. And that's again, I have put it as a blank where we'll uh, put uh, my driving direction to one location to other location. Okay, so, okay, so with that, my HTML is ready. So if I go back to my Chrome and if I go to the finders.html now, you can see uh, I got some page, right? come to a real life store but uh, that map and the driving direction is not there because those are blank div as of now. Okay. So this is our uh, uh, the coffee of the month image and this is our uh, home image, right? And those are the two images what we saw in our finders.html and which is uh, just common across all our pages, you can see that. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we'll implement the geolocation to show you the map and the driving direction. 
Okay, cool. So now what we'll do, we have to add a script. So like we have added drag and drop chase, similar way I'm going to add one more JavaScript file. Okay, and I have already given a reference over here. You can see. The reference I am saying script sets slash geo positioning dot js. So this is what a file I'm going to add here. Geo positioning dot js. Done. I've already uh, provided a reference in my HTML. Okay, I'll talk about why I did this or I'll remove or I'll add it later. Okay, now similar way here, if you remember, we've written a function at the top and then in our all coffees.html, we are just calling that function when my event called DOM content loaded get fired. And when this get event get fired, when your entire HTML will be get loaded, then browser fires this event saying your DOM document object model, which is nothing but your HTML, got loaded. So I get to know, okay, my HTML got loaded, then okay, let's call this function now. Let's execute this function. So similar way we'll achieve uh, something uh, here also. So we'll also going to write a function which will uh, give us some name. So uh, so I have already did that. I just copy over here and it will how to look. I you can see I just added a script tag and same way document dot add event listener. I'm listening for DOM content loaded. I I when that happens, I'll just call this function that's called create driving directions map. That's what the name I've given. So I'll go back here and I'll create that function. Done. So my function is created, the blank function, and now I have to implement the geolocation over there. Okay. So in the geo location, uh, I told first thing I have to uh, so there is only one method, right? Then that method name is get current position. That's all I have to do, right? So that I'll get the position uh, of uh, position of what uh, the user. Okay, so that's what I have to do. So so before that, I will check whether my browser supports geo location or not. So to check that, I can just say navigator. That's what the method name. Okay, navigator dot geolocation. G O G O location. So navigator dot geolocation is object name. Like for the drag and drop, we uh, what was the object name? Remember. Uh, there was nothing called object name. We are just listening for drag over. Okay, for local storage, the object name was local storage, and then the method name was set item, right? So in the geolocation, the object name is navigator dot geolocation. So I'm checking whether geolocation is supported on my my browser or not. So this will, if uh, my browser finds this object, that means geolocation is supported. If geolocation is supported, then what I'll do. I'll say navigator dot geolocation dot. You can see already I'm seeing the method names. Get current position, right? That's what the method name is. Get current position. Done. And then I have to pass two callbacks. Once uh, one I'll say on success, and next one I'll say on on error. Cool. And the third parameter will be you can pass some attributes. Okay, so this is a simple call. Navigator dot geolocation dot get current position. I'll just call it. Once I'll get the location successfully, the on success function will get called. I'll write that on success. And if some error happens, on error will come. And this third parameter I can pass few attributes. Okay, and what all attributes you can pass? What you want? You want a high accuracy data, then there is an attribute called enable high accuracy. I can pass that as a true. So if you don't want high accuracy data, it's still it's if it's not very high accurate, also you are fine, then you don't have to pass this parameter. Okay, and then you can say maximum age, means how old data you need. That's called maximum age. So I need just a one second old data. I don't want where user was five minutes before. I don't I won't want that data. 
So every one second, I want to get this current position. So I want just a uh, one second delay. And what should be timeout? So timeout means within this time, if I don't get data, then you just uh, go to the on error. I don't want data. So that timeout I've given 5,000. That's in millisecond. That means five second. 1,000 again in millisecond. That means one second. That's all done. And then I'll write else. If geolocation is not supported in my bar browser, then I'll just uh, put a message for the user. I'll just say document dot get element that by id map means I'm looking for this div. Here id is map line number forty two. And in that I'm saying inner HTML and I'm printing no support for geolocation. We can't find it. So, so that message I'll show up so that the user will get to know okay and my browser doesn't support geolocation. Okay, so if your question which all browser doesn't support geolocation? So if you are on an older browser, uh, let's say some Internet Explorer 6, 7, those are very older browsers, so those browsers doesn't support geolocation. But all the modern browsers with the latest versions, they all support geolocations. That's done. So now I have to write uh, this on success function. So I'll write that on success function. Okay, and this on success function will receive the position because I am asking for get current position, right? So it will receive the position if the call succeed. And in that, I'll write one more function saying show map. So that function will be responsible for showing the map. I'll write it again. And what I'll pass, I'll pass position will have coordinates. So I'll pass position dot C O O R D S. That's called coordinates dot latitude latitude okay so you know latitude and longitude right that's a two axis of uh, what we receive when we're trying to get a location in the earth in the earth we'll say this is my x axis this is my y axis means this is latitude that's a longitude and those two data is nothing but your position that you are currently so so this get current position will give me those two data one is chord start latitude and there is longitude, latitude and longitude. Okay, so I got those <coughs> and I'm calling this on success, so, sorry, uh, the show map. So now I have to write a function show map also. Okay, so before that we'll write uh, what? This function, yes. then before that I'll write function on error. Okay, so I'll write on error. On error will receive why the error has happened. And here we can write a condition. Uh, so I have already written that and explained uh, that. Uh, functionality uh, here. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here, so I'm taking a reference of that map div which is there in our HTML, which is there in this finders.html, that line number 42. So I've just taken a reference of that and then I created a map div variable. An error will have error code. So if error code comes permission denied, then I'll display a message saying user denied the request for geolocation. If error comes position unavailable, I'll say local in, sorry, location information is unavailable. If timeout happens, I'll say the request to get user location timed out. If unknown error happens, I'll say unknown error occurred. And that's why you get. So because I'll give some message. Let's say you're trying to access the user location and due to some XYZ reason you could not, then I'll show you that XYZ reason. Okay, and that's what this on error function is doing over here. Cool. Okay, now I'll write a function show map, right? Because the show map will be responsible for showing me the map. So I'll write another function. I'll call it show map. 
and now in the show map is receiving two parameters, right? One is latitude, other is longitude. So I'll say la LATD, that's, uh, I'll just say LAT or long, okay? So these two meanings are latitude and longitude, okay? That's what I received here because I'm uh, passing those two data from here, line number 13, okay? That's true. And here, uh, what I'll do, let's say for now we'll just console log it. I'll say, oh no, we'll not do console log, uh, we'll do this, something like this, so that we can see there. So what I'm doing, I will try to print those two location on there. So here I will say latitude is lat plus I give a space longitude I'll remove this each this looks better plus long so I'm trying to print that latitude in longitude okay cool so that's all now we'll go to our browser we'll go to finders page we'll refresh nothing comes up We'll go to console. Okay, so there is some error uh, at the line number 35 which says cannot set property inner HTML of none. So this line is getting some error. What's happening? We'll find it out. of none. So basically we have not received that. So we'll put a breakpoint and we'll debug. We can go to the source and we'll open our script. Geopositioning.js is there. We'll put a breakpoint here. First we'll see if we are getting on success or not. Okay. So now I'll reload this again. Okay. Somewhere it stopped. Okay, first we'll see if this call is happening or not. So, so anyway, we can debug it. Okay, it came over here. It went inside, that's fine. Then it should go to the on success. All right. So, we didn't went to the on success. Okay, looks like we did a mistake something. We'll go back to our code. This is a function which is calling this. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll put this function outside of this function. This those function has to define first. Now it looks better. Now we'll go back to our code again. We'll load this. What's wrong happening?
the script itself is gone. Come on. Hmm. Geo location we're not getting. Geo position why that why the only is not there? What's happening? Okay. Okay, this is a function. Another function. Okay. Another finder that is I'm saying when it happens, you load this guy. Let's load this guy correctly. Yeah, function on error. Show map everything is there on success. No error. Everything is fine. Geo positioning that has been sourced. Scripts. Okay, script slash geo positioning dot this. this looks also correct. And what happened? Sorry, I'm just trying to find out why it's okay. Okay, I got it. I don't know what's wrong. You can see now I got it here. If I read this, you can see this is 12. I can read this entire position. You can see I got the coordinates, longitude and latitude. I got it, and from here. Okay, something wrong happened here now. Type error cannot set in HTML of none. So we'll see what's going wrong in our last line code. This is where something went wrong. Document dot get element by id dot in HTML. Oh, oh got it. What's happened wrong? This happened wrong. So I wrapped it everything around a string, so it was looks like a string. Uh, so that's why things got screwed up. So this has to be has a looks like variable, right? Go clean back again. We will load again. We're getting position. After that, something going screw. Show map is there. Now I'll go inside show map. I came over here. I got the lot and everything is working fine till that. I searched it in the HTML. I got it. Latitude I want to put 12. Longitude I want to print 17. But this is not working. We do this. Cannot set property in a HTML of null. Why it's saying that? Still now we are, we are getting the data. You saw we got the data, but only thing is it's not printing over here. Oh, oh, I got it. So what's the error I have done? So map is an ID, so which has to I have to pass as a string. I have to pass it as a string. Where also that mistake is here. That's why so here I have done it as a string and now it should work. So the ID is I have to pass it some string, right? I can so it was I just pass map then it will look like a variable and that's why it was not working. Good. Okay, so I got at least some message which says the request to get user location has signed out because it looks like some error has happened when we were trying to get the location of myself. So I'll reload this again. Okay, now I got, you can see that. So I, I can demo you the error also and the success also. So the last time we saw, we saw timed out. That means some error has happened, the time mode error. And now you can see the my latitude and longitude which is getting displayed here. 
So this is how you can get to know the user's longitude and latitude, right? So any user who is logged into this website, uh, you can see his latitude and longitude. You can get that. And this is where my current location's longitude and latitude. And you can see it's pretty simple, right? Although we face some other issues, that's why we're struggling. But apart from that simple, we just call get current position. On success, on error, it come to on success. On the on success, we got the position and that position is having a property called coordinates and that coordinates we got longitude and longitude and now we got so now what we'll do instead of just showing uh, the value of longitude and latitude as it is what we are going to do will use a google map okay google map will use and will show this longitude and longitude in a map okay so that's what i'm going to do now so to use the Google map, we have to use their uh, API. So I have to use a Google API. So if you want to use a Google API for just for a demonstration purpose, it's free. But for uh, business purpose, you have to pay if you are using their API. Okay, so now this line number six I got added, which is nothing but their API. I'm trying to get their Google API JS file, maps.google.sc slash map API slash JS. That's what their uh, JavaScript, what I want to get hold of. And you just have to add this line to access the Google map APIs. And then we have to come to our geo positioning.js um, JavaScript file. And then where well, now we can use the Google APIs, right? So what we'll do, we, uh, so this I'll remove it because this is not what the intention was. Intention, so I now I'll create a two variable, one for the direction service and one to show you the map. Okay, so to show the map it's pretty simple I just have to create I have to pass this latitude and longitude to the Google map API okay so to do that I'm just copying one thing and I'll explain what it is so I just created a variable called route okay in that route uh, okay, I don't need this also as of now first I just have to show the map right so to show the map what I'll do I just have to create a map option object so I just created this okay so what this is map option is object where a uh, zoom label I've given 10 if you remember when you open this Google map you see the zoom label you can zoom it uh, it's a different label right then I have given some center I mean what should be the center of your map when you're trying to show some map uh, in that map what should be your center so I have given some longitude and latitude that will be a uh, center of my map and for that I am using new google dot maps dot latland that's a google api name and I can able to use this google methods because I have added this line line number six in my html right which is a reference to my google api so that I can able to use this google dot maps dot lat long and I have to just pass the latitude and long, longitude what should be the center of my map and then the map type what kind of map type I need I need a road map so I'm saying google dot maps dot map type ID is road map so these are what has to be the method and all we can uh, search over net the google map APIs you'll get the good documentation and these all we have taken from there and then I have to create the map so to create the map what I have to say and that reference of map I'll show in a map variable and then I have to say new google dot map dot map that's what the method name to create a map okay and that map I want to render it here document dot get element by any map that's what where I want to show the map and I just have to pass the map option whatever the map option I just created okay so with that now I can C 
see the map. Okay, so instead of hard coding this guy, you can pass uh, this lat log also here. Okay. Or you can search your, so what our objective was. Our objective was will give you our stores location, our stores location, right? And then will fetch your location and from that location to our store location will give you the path. That's what the intention was. So that's why what this uh, uh, language and learning to is I have given. So that you assume this is our store. This is our coffee store. And I'm just giving you. Excuse me. With this, it should work. We'll see. Otherwise, I think I can add the relation also. You can see the map has come up. Good. Now you can see how many lines of code we added. Just now you can see some map. And I've given the center as a Bangalore. So that's a longitude and latitude. What you are seeing, right? What I have hard coded there. That's the longitude and latitude of Bangalore. So that's why in our map you can see the Bangalore is at the center. And I have some zoom label, so I have given and that's how if you have seen some of the website they integrated the map, right? And this is how they do integration of map. And you can see how simple it is. How simple it is. What I did, I just set an object where I'm saying what should be my zoom label, what should be my center of the map, and I just have to say new Google Maps lat long. I just have to give latitude and longitude. What kind of map I need? I need a road map. And so I give a road map, and then I just create a new Google Maps dot map where I want to show that map in this div. I just pass that option, and now you can see the map in our page. So this is our store location. Uh, let's assume. Uh, whatever it's showing uh, that's let's say whatever is there at the center that's our store location so what now we want to do we want to give we want to fetch your location I mean the user's location and we'll create a roadmap from user's location to our coffee store location so that it will be easier for a user to visit to our coffee store and can have a coffee so now to do that what I'll do I have to create, I now I have to use a direction service which is uh, the Google API provide. So I have to create a reference of that to direction service. So I'll create a variable called uh, direction service. And that variable will be nothing but a new Google dot maps dot direction service. B capital. So now I'm uh, using a direction service which will uh, actually help me to give me the direction. And now I have to use one more service that's called a direction render. And same I have to do new Google dot maps dot. Okay, these are if you are wondering from where I got this method, uh, this is from the Google documentation, Google API documentation. Okay, done. And now I have to create a route. Route object I'll create. Route means I'll say in that route from where to where I want to go. So for that I'll create an object. In similar way how we created maps option and we that parts that map option, right? Similar way I have to create a route where I have to say what should be my origin. And my origin will be my own location, right? So I'll say new Google dot maps dot lat long this guy and I just have to pass the latitude and longitude so I'll pass the latitude and longitude of user so this is nothing but the latitude and longitude of the user and then what should be your destination so I have to pass that destination so destination this 
destination so destination is let's say I'll give some location in Bangalore let's say I'm giving the location Manita Bangalore so it's a tech park in Bangalore where the coffee store is then I have to say travel mode what should be the travel mode so you want to travel by driving or cycling or walking right these are the options which comes when you use Google map right so I'm saying Google dot maps dot direction travel mode is driving how to drive that's all so I create an object now now what I'll do I'll use this direction render reference service what I have created and there I will just say set map a method which uh, Google method and there I'll just pass this map then <coughs> then I'll add one method what is there that's called route line number 55 to 59 what just copied so that's a direction service direction service is having a method called route so direction render sets a renderer sets you map and the route takes this route okay this route what I just created origin destination and all and then it gives me again I have given a callback and this gives me a callback result status and okay or not so if status is okay I'll use direction render dot set direction and whatever the result I got so this method route is basically will give you what is your route directions once I get that direction I'll just set it okay so this everything we are doing because I'm using Google map if you don't want to use Google map you don't have to have do this we have done that before uh, just one line we show the you where you are right and we got the latitude and longitude with us this method so geolocation job is done because geolocation job is just giving you the latitude and longitude this method show map whatever you're doing we are trying to use the Google API and trying to show it in a map that's an additional requirement that's not a part of geolocation HTML API geolocation HTML5 API's job is it will give you the latitude and longitude that's all once we got that latitude and longitude at the line number 35 we are trying to play around with the Google map and that's what we, we are doing now so just to show Google map line number 46 to 52 was enough what we did but now I want to show the direction also so that's why I have to use two service for that one is direction service other is render service so direction service will give you the direction and render service will help you to render it on your map that's why the names are like this direction service will help you to get you the direction direction render service will help you to render it and that's what I'm doing first I'm just rendering the map line number 53 set map I'm just rendering that map now nothing else then I'm calling this route method which will give me the result the result is nothing but the direction once my status is okay I'll just set the direction with that render now everything is done now if I go back to my browser I'll reload this you see the direction okay so this is what our direction is showing so this is my current location and it's going to this AB cool so now if anyone wants to visit to our coffee store he just have to come to find us and he see okay okay what is the path from my location to that coffee store and this we implement and this people implement in your, their real website also right you might have seen in some of the website they will show you a path like this how to come and we did that help of using Google API and the geolocation and there are ways you can show you there in the path also if you see the Google map when you search something it shows right take go 500 meter take left go 300 meter take a turn around so those kind of information also you can show okay so with that uh, that's all about uh, geolocation uh, just uh, give me a moment I'll switch the uh, PPT uh,
what next Hi. Oh, sorry. I can't hear the new voice. Yeah. Oh, sorry, okay. I was on. Okay. Okay. No problem. Okay. So, so what? I was, yeah. Please. Yeah. Go. I have a question. Uh, like you showed the Google Maps, you can implement in a website, and yep. you can like you also told that we can even navigate uh, just like the directions. Yep. So we are doing everything. Then what makes uh, Google API? Do we need to buy to implement in the business? Like. Yeah, so Google can detect uh, his APIs has been, so this is my uh, website, right? So this is, uh, I've just used as a local host. Okay. So if I'm creating a domain and I'm trying to use his uh, API, he can get to know which domain he's using and what is the usage rate, how many users are using. So it will not allow me to use at the same time more than 20 users, let's an example. So obviously you buy it. So here I'm just okay. alone was using, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how they, they make money. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, next I was uh, uh, talking about audio video API. So audio video API helps us to uh, play media files and it's it's also a very a great use case in the browsers because nowadays all the websites will have some video content to play. And if you want to play some of the video content, you, you don't need any uh, plugin nowadays uh, because HTML5 supports it. So browser has inbuilt support of or inbuilt capability of playing audio and video file without any plugin. So before HTML5 support, the older browser used to play audio and video plugin uh, through Silverlight, Adobe Media Player, Flash Player, those all being used. The audio and video is not only the JavaScript API, it is having the HTML element also. So there is a HTML element called audio, there is a HTML element called video also there. And there is a HTML5 JavaScript API or the object name called audio is there, object name video is there, like the geolocation. So, it, so audio video is having the HTML element also and object also. So audio tag is for audio, video tag is for video. Audio tag has no visual uh, representation, so it will not, not it will, it will not look something like uh, our audio player, something like that. It will not, it, will, it doesn't have any vis visual representation, but video will have uh, visual representation with all media options like uh, play, pause. Uh, volume, those all things you get it when you're trying to use video. Okay, then what all APIs it is having? Audio and videos uh, is having the common properties. So the, the common properties are SRC attribute and SRC is attribute for other things also, right? We have used image element there also we have to provide SRC to uh, give a path to the image which I want to render. So similar way audio video is also having a SRC attribute where you could keep the path of audio and video file what, what you want to play. 
then there is an option called auto play so auto play what it does as soon as you your uh, page will get loaded uh, your audio and video starts playing and that's what nowadays is facebook and twitter does right as soon as you open your uh, facebook uh, post if any video is there as a post then it just starts playing automatically and that's happening because of this auto play only so by auto play as soon as your video gets loaded it will uh, start play also so that you can disable also so you can see a example where i'm giving audio and the video as a source source is nothing but the uh, path to my uh, audio and video file then there is an attribute called auto play if i say auto play called auto play it will automatically play when it's slow then there is uh, something called loop so you want to create a loop or not loop you know right once your audio or video played completely it will again reload it will again play it from starts you might see some website does that when it does finish again it will start playing so that's called a loop so you can say loop equal to true so at that time it will go in a loop and then a preload is there preload is kind of your buffering type so what you want you want as soon as my page gets loaded my video also should start buffering then you have to say preload is auto and if you don't want that let's you when user try to play it then only it should start loading then you can say preload none so these are few of the options are there then one is the control so when you say attribute control then it will display you the media controls like a play button pause button mute options if you don't say control you don't want control then you will not get those options normally just your video will just play then uh, there is something called muted so if you say muted true then your when your uh, video or, or will get started it will start in a mute option and that's what we get in facebook if you say it, it although it's automatically plays but by default it will be mute when you tap on that and when it comes as a full screen then you hear the music that's what the facebook follows so you can also have something like that you can say muted but your video will play but you will not able to hear anything but yeah because that's annoying sometimes right because you are just uh an office or something you are just browsing facebook and suddenly a video starts playing with full voice uh, that's that's annoying so that's why uh, that's a good practice when you're playing your video start with mute and if user wants they can obviously unmute it so there are the few common properties which audio video provides and we'll use it in our example i'll show you an example also and then there are a few video specific properties are there those are like width and height because you can provide a width and height to a video window means uh, your video player should take this much width that much height you can define that and uh, you can have a poster you might see in the youtube right um, it says some it gives you some poster but when you start playing it's it just starts play from somewhere else so that's nothing but a poster poster of your video so your poster can be different from your content so so that's how you can define your poster you can see this example uh, where i'm saying video uh, src is i've given a path to a video file and then the poster attribute in that you can give a path to an image and then the width uh, of your uh, video player window so there are few video specific properties and what we saw before those were common to audio and video bots like uh, source auto play loop preload control mute so different browser supports different media types the media types you know right uh, we we will have different uh, video uh, player one with dot mp mp4 dot ogg uh, dot mvi there will be different uh, media types you see in the video files so and all browser doesn't support all the types so different browser support different media types if you want to know what browser supports what you can search over net saying chrome supports what all video type media types then it will you will get information so in that case you have to be careful uh, so you have to give all different file uh, formats because you don't know uh, 
your user is having which browser. So you have to write a code in such a way so that your user opens your website in any of the browser, be it Internet Explorer or the Chrome or the Mozilla or the Safari, your video should get played. It should not say, hey, okay, this type is not supported. So in that way, you can specify something like this. You can see this. I'm saying video element, then I've given a post and wait. Inside that, you can see two sources are there. Source, SRC, I've given bestcoffee.mp4 file once, and I've given a type video slash mp4. And next, I've given source, SRC, bestcoffee.ogg file. So what happens, it goes in order. So if browser, if it loads in a Chrome, and if Chrome supports the first format itself, it will overlook the second one. But if it doesn't support MP4, then it will fall back to the next one, OGG format. So similar way, you can have third, fourth, and you, you can try to cover all the formats where you can cover most of the popular browsers. Okay, so that's about how we uh, specify uh, the browser supports and uh, next is uh, you can write uh, things in the JavaScript also. So in the JavaScript also you can control the playback, it can be done using JavaScript APIs also. So in the JavaScript also there is a play, pause, pause properties are there by which you can play your uh, uh, video, you can pause your video, you can you can get to know whether it's paused or not. So, so those things also can be available. So you can see this. Uh, so as of now, this three section, what we saw, these are HTML uh, attributes and elements, right? So now I'm talking about JavaScript methods also, which is there for uh, audio and video. That's like we are having play, pause, and pause property. I can so I can say video dot play from JavaScript. Uh, so you can have a button. When you click on that button, your video will start get playing. When you click uh, the button again, then your video will get paused. So that will be a logic of this. So what I'm doing, I'm checking whether coffee dot vid. Coffee dot vid is nothing but that element reference where your video is. So I'm checking if coffee dot pause equal to equal to paused. I missed one equal there. If it's paused already, then play it. If it's not pause, then pause it with the same button. And with that button, I can have click event, and on that click event, I can call this method called play pause. So this is what a JavaScript way of implementation. And then you are having a few events. That is one for play event, pause event. So you can register for those events. Those events get fired. So when your video starts playing, you can fire event called play. When it's paused, it's fire event pause. You can register a function against those events, or if you want to take some action, and then you can do that. Then a playback wait. So if you want to, uh, you might have seen we do fast forward, right? Uh, so those you can control through playback wait. So how, what you, what should be your playback wait you want? That you can set using this playback wait method. You can say playback wait two, then it will go in a two. At speed. The current time, this current time uh, property, what it does, it finds the current location in the media, means how much has been already played. So if you want to know your video is uh, 10 minutes long and you want to know how many minutes has been already played, uh, so, so this current time is a method which helps that. If you call it returns me. Uh, the current time what that video is at and the duration is actually gives me the entire length of the media how long the video is it's a 20 minutes video or 10 minutes video that I can got you know the from a property called duration so these are the high level uh, what are the properties methods events uh, the audio video JavaScript API is away and what are the attributes and HTML elements we need uh, to implement in our view so now uh, what we'll do, uh, we'll just implement an example and in that example what we'll do, uh, we'll say we'll implement a video in our website, right, and that website will be our own uh, coffee store website, then we'll, give, we'll play a video of how to make coffee or something like that. Okay, so, so what we are going to do, uh, in the 
coffee details HTML. Okay, I'll go back to our code. So in the code, looks like the knife is offline. We'll wait for him. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes, yes. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, there was little uh, disturbance in the network, so I just changed to other network. Uh, can you okay. please repeat it from the uh, slide? So, where exactly you lost the connection? Uh, one minute ago. It may be like, uh, okay. can you open the slide? I will say you where it was. Yeah, I think this is a slide where you lost. Yeah, the that's the slide. Yeah, playback rate. Yeah, so the playback rate is how you can control the speed of your playback, and the current time actually returns you the current uh, status of your video where it is. So let's say 20 minutes video is there, and you are currently seeing the 10 minutes content. Uh, so you will return the video is already played for 10 minutes. Okay, so that if you want to know, you can use this property called current time, and there is a property called duration, which will give you the entire length of your um, audio or video content, whether it's a 10 minute, 5 minutes video. That information you get to know from duration. Okay, so with this, uh, we'll go to our uh, code, and uh, so in the same website what we created BG's coffee store there will play a small video which will be a video of some coffee making or something okay so what we'll do we are having a page called coffee details .html, right and how to go to that page if we go to our Chrome the website if I go to the home page if I click on this coffee I come to this coffee details HTML page where the details about the coffee is there. What we'll do at the bottom of this coffee detail, we'll play a small video of that coffee. So to do that, what we'll do, we'll go back to our application, uh, the coffee details.html at the end of this section where my coffee paragraph ends. I will add a video tag, right? So do that I'll just add a div and inside that div I'll just copy a video file I'm just copying a video element and I'll explain what this video element will do so this video element I've given some width and height so that uh, it will have some width and height of for that player and then uh, I have given a class of okay, that's different for styling of ID and I have a poster okay the poster will be our logo only logo.png and I have told autoplay autoplay means as soon as I will load my page my video should start playing and then I've given two uh, type of source okay so uh, it, it will work on different browsers so if my for browser able to decode this mp4 type of video it will ignore this line number 54 but if it could not decode mp or it could not support mp4 type then it will fall back to the 54 line number 54 where i am giving the other format that's ocg format and if my browser doesn't support that also then it will i'll show you sadly your browser has no support for video that is a message which i'm going to print Okay, that's fine. So I'm already having images slash logo. I'll make it small line. And I don't have this video folder. I don't have video file. So I'll just copy that so that uh, we can see that uh, video over there. So just give me a moment. I'm just copying those two videos to our code structure. Done, it came up, you saw that. 
So I just copied this to four video files which I have referenced at line number 53 and 54. That's pretty simple. That's all we have to do. And now we go back to our browser. We'll reload this page. Oops, you can see some video has started. But you can see this video doesn't have any control. I can't play, I can't pause it, I can't play it, I can't uh, mute it. So nothing I'm able to do it because I've not given that option called control. So I can go back to my code and what I can say, I can just say control. Yeah, I'll just say controls. Okay. Or even I can say muted also. If you remember, there was a property called uh, uh, muted as well. So I can do that also, so that will not hear anything when my that's all. Now we'll go back to our browser again. We'll reload. So I can see you are not able to hear any music of this, and I can see the control also. You can see the control. I can do everything now. I can pause it. Pause it. I can play it, mute it, I can play in a bigger window, I can download it. Okay, so this just came up because I just added that controls attribute and it's in mute by default because I just added mute it. So this, uh, you can see how simple it is. And this is same for audio, if you want to play audio, just to say audio and you do this. But yeah, you'll not get any view of audio, so as soon as you load your page, you'll start hearing something that's called audio. <laughs> but there will be no view for your audio. Okay, so what now I want to do, uh, so with this also it's fine, our, our, our implementation is done, but let's say I don't like the default controls what my browser is giving. I want to create my own control because now in this video there is no option I can do a fast forward I can the rewind, those options are not there. So what, let's say I want to add those options. I want to add a uh, fast forward option, rewind option, back, come to back option, those all I, buttons I want to add. Just for a learning the JavaScript API, uh, JavaScript video API. So to do that, what I'll do now, I'll add few of the buttons. So I'll remove this control, this muted, both the thing from here. So the muted will keep it. After this video tag, I'll just add one more div, and in that div there are a couple of you can see the buttons I've added. So I've added a first okay, this this is a blank div I've added, line number fifty-nine. If any error happens, I want to show some error over there, that's why I added. And next, I just added a couple of buttons. One is I want to run it a slow motion. I want to rewind it. I want to play it or pause it. I want to forward it. I want to do a fast for fast forward and a mute button. So these all buttons I just added, normal buttons. Now if we go to our browser, I reload this page. You can see the buttons have come up, but obviously those buttons is not working because I have not implemented any JavaScript logic behind that. So when I click, currently nothing is happening. How will you do it? Go back to code. So now we have to write a JavaScript for that. So we'll write, uh, we'll add a new JavaScript file and we'll name it videoplayer.js. So I'll just say videoplayer.js. So I added a file, I have given a name called video player.js. So I'm just copying uh, my uh, layout.css to be in sync so that I should not miss any style. And then uh, all coffees.html I have to, sorry, the coffee details.html I have to uh, refer it. So here at the top, Sorry, coffee details not HTML at the top. I have to refer that. So I have to say copy this. Put it here. 
and then I'll say script slash video player dot chase. That's good. Done. And similar way, uh, we'll have a method. This has to call, get called on my when my DOM gets loaded. So if you remember to do that, what I just have to do, I just have to add this line. Document dot add event listener DOM content loaded when my page gets loaded. You just call this function. So then I have to write this function obviously here. So I will write a function. Cool. So in that function, now what I am going to do? I want to control those all buttons what I have created. So to even before that, I have to take a reference of that element uh, where my video is there. That then only I'll get all those. Uh, I can play around all those methods. So to take a reference, uh, what was our ID? So if you go here, we're given some ID that's called video player. That's what our ID is, right? So we'll so we'll take the reference of that element by ID. So we'll I'll just do this. So where video equal to document dot get element dot y id video player. That's the first thing I've done. And then uh, I'll write all those methods. So first I'll write a method to play and pause. Okay. So to play and pause, I'll write a function called play video. Okay, which will receive an event. So this is a function which whose name I've given play video. Here I want to play the video or pause the video. So how I'll do that? So to do that, I have to call this function when my that button uh, get pressed. Pressed which button? this button, play button, this line number 63. So when someone press this button, I should call that function where I should, if it's playing, video is playing, I should pause it. If it's pause, I should play it. Okay, so I uh, so I'll take a reference of this button. So to take a reference of that button and I, I'll register with an on click event. Okay, so this line, document.get element by ID, ID name was play button, add event listener, I'm listening for the click event, when click happens, call this function. Cool, done. And now in this function, what I'm going to do, in this function, I'll create a variable, that button equal to evt dot, this event dot target. So this will give me which button I'm targeting. Okay, so whatever button get pressed, I'll I'll get to know which button got pressed by this event. And then I am now I'm using the JavaScript video. This video is a JavaScript object. If I say video dot pause, it will give me whether video is paused or not. So video dot pause, if video is already paused, it will return me true. If video is not paused, it will return me false. If video is paused, what I have to do, I have to play it. I just have to say video dot play simple right else video if video is not paused then pause it P A U S C simple and then I should change the uh, content of that also right first I'll show play if video is paused I should show play if video is playing, I should show pause. That's how it should happen. So if my video is paused, then I'll play it and I'll change the content of the text to pause. And if my video is paused, sorry, playing, pause it and then change the content to play. Cool. Okay, done. So now we'll go and test it whether that button is working or not. Every time it's always recommended write small, test it, then write for it. 
You don't write entire file and then come for test. Now it's playing. It's not working. That's cool. Now we'll debug why it's not working. Initialize video control is not defined. Initialize video con player controller is not defined. That's what it's saying. So it's not getting that script. Yeah, the script file itself is not coming. You can see that script folder is not there. We go to coffee one. Yeah, so roughly answer up same. We'll see. Uh, maybe some some error will be there in our code. This method is not defined. That's what that code is saying. Why it's not defined? I have named it video player .js inside scripts. I go to coffee details or HTML. Okay, you can see here the typo is there. That's why it's always a uh, best practice to copy and paste. Done. Now I can say it's playing. I see pause. I pause it. Now it gives me play. It starts playing again, and when I and it's showing me pause, I click on pause. It's got paused. Now the button shows play. I can play. So like this, I have we have done for this button, but other buttons are still not done. So I'll I'll do for other buttons also. We'll do now. So again, we'll go back to our JavaScript file, and for other buttons also, we have to write the click event. We have to listen for the click events right so <coughs> first we'll do for the back and forward button so to first do that back and forward button uh, we have to write a function which will help us to so this function will call it when I'll click the uh, back button and forward button it should forward and back it right that's how it should be. And I'll pass your number of seconds, means how many seconds I want to forward it, how many seconds I want to backward it. And I will write those two register functions. Okay, you can see I just pasted this back button, forward button, and the same document dot get element at the back button reference. On that I'm listening for the click event. Once someone clicked, we just call this function. In this call function, I'm just calling the sick method and I'm passing minus five. Means you go minus five seconds. And here in the forward button, I am saying five. That means I won't go five seconds further. That's what my forward five second, backward five second uh, functionality. Then what I will do here, I'll say if number of seconds equal to zero sorry equal to equal to zero and so if I receive zero from here right I can then what I can do so there is a map property called video dot current Time. That's what I have mentioned. It's in PPT was there, so by which you can set the current time. So I'm just setting the current time to zero. That's the first thing what I have to do. As whatever the current time is there, whatever the current time is there, you just say plus equal. Plus equal means adding to itself only and store. Plus equal number of seconds or it's similar to something like this.
Okay, so this will do our job. So current time is a property which is uh, video object is having, and that helps us to set the current time of that video. So when I say plus five, whatever the current time is there, let's say you have already played for 10 seconds, I'll just add five there so that will automatically jump to 15 seconds. I'll set the current time to 15. Again, if it's already 15 and I say back button, then I'll just number of seconds will be minus five because I'm passing minus five over here. So what will happen? 15 minus five, 10. It will jump back to my 10 seconds. So that's how my video uh, will go forward and backward. We'll test it. This is my forward, this is my rewind. And I say rewind, forward. Something is happening, nothing is happening. Actually. We'll debug and we'll see what's happening or not. Uh oh, I have not saved that file. See, it's, it's unsaved. Now I saved it. Ah, now it should work. I say forward. You can see it got forwarded. I say rewind. It's got rewind. Forward, rewind. Forward, rewind. Rewind, 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 rewind. It comes to the start. Forward, 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 forward. It ends. So that's how my forward and rewind is working now. And what I used, I just used that current time. I'm just setting a current time, how you want, how much, and I've just given a default five second forward and five second uh, rewind. Okay, and now we are having few more buttons. We'll implement that and then we'll enter the session. So rewind, forward. Okay, good. So now uh, I'm going to implement the slower and faster button so that my video can run slow motion or in the fast motion. So to do that, it's pretty simple. I'm just pressing report uh, line number 35 to line number 44. I just press it now. Again, I'm taking a reference of the button where I've given slower button with the ID. If you want, you can see it here. Right? This is slower, this is faster. The ID is slower button, ID is faster button. Line number 61, line number 65. Okay, and here when someone clicks that, I'm executing this function. And I told there is a properties there that's called playback rate by which you can decide how fast and how slow you want to run it. So I'm just given a playback rate as minus 0.25% and if I say faster button it will be plus 25%. And if my so this will be faster by 0.25% or slower by 0.25%. Normal will be 1. If you say 0.25, it will be slower by, it will run, like in one second, actually it will run the content of 0.75 seconds. When you say faster, in one second, it will run the content of 1.25 seconds. That's all. Now if we'll go and test. If I say slower, you can see now, slow motion. I'll say faster. Very fast. Slower. Play pause working. Rewind. Slower. Play. You see how slow it is. Faster. Oops. 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 Okay. So this is how what we implemented the 
slower and faster with our playback away property. Before we have used current time property. Before that we have used a property called paused and two methods called new paused. Now the only thing I got remaining is our mute. Mute button we have not done. Yet. Okay. So let's say for the mute button what we will do. I'm just adding a more post to it. So I have just taken a reference of mute button. When I click, I have registered a function this. In this function, what I'm checking, there is a property called muted. So I'm checking if video is muted, then unmute it. Video not muted set to false. If video is not muted, then mute it. That's all it will do. So it's a kind of a play and pause what we do. That's all. So a new property, now we know that's called video.muted. And this is there in audio also, audio.muted, audio.playback rate, audio.current time, audio.play, audio.pause. These are common things are there between audio and video. Now you can hear something. Unmute. You are not able to hear something. Mute. Unmute. Cool. So now we have implemented our own feature of all the play and pause, rewind and forward, faster and slower, everything. And I'm using the HTML5 video JavaScript things. So with this, uh, that's all what I have for today. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask. Uh, if, uh, Uh, can I get uh, the code for this website? I mean, it started from scratch, so we have everything. This website, uh, what yeah, I just put. Yeah, the code. Yeah, I'm I'm sending it every day. You must be receiving the uh, yeah. gradual way of uh, increment, right? So today you'll receive with whatever the today's functionality. So that will be a latest. Yeah, sure. Okay. Anything else uh, you want to know? Um, that's it. Okay, thank you Dilip for joining today's session. So tomorrow we'll be learning the Canvas and SVG and that will be our last content in my HTML5 and then the node. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you.